he was born healthy. He was, it was a, a normal pregnancy, um, took him home. He was a little jaundiced, but that wasn't anything to be concerned about. And went through all the normal things you go through with a newborn um, until he was about four months old. He used to have little startle reflexes a lot, but we didn't really think that much of it, except there wasn't anything startling him. We later found out they were myoclonic seizures, but we, we didn't know. They were just little head drops and, and eye flutters, but the big ones that scared us were tonic-clonic. He'd get stiff and his eyes would roll into the back of his head, and um, that's when we'd, we went to the emergency room for every single one of them. We called 911 for every single one, and they, they diagnosed him with like a generalized epilepsy and threw him on phenobarbital. And, didn't really do much, didn't control much. He kept having seizures. So we went to our pediatrician and said, we need to talk to somebody else. So we went to Boston, and that's ultimately where we got our diagnosis at 19 months. When you, when you have a family with multiple children, you have a child that's been uh, diagnosed with Dravet. I'm sure it's other afflictions too. Um, it does change your family dynamic. Um, you know, especially since Alex is limited in what he can do, you know, um, and all the attention he gets. So we really go out of our way to bring them in into the caregiving of Alex, so to speak, um, involving them, so they understand more. I did get a little jealous. I mean, sometimes you think certain issues are because of Alex, but then it could just be, you know, that's our normal. You know, it, it, I think we over, um, over evaluate stuff a lot, but uh, they're great. <laughs> Sorry. A good day's no seizures. That's a good day. He has good days most days. We feel blessed compared to a lot of other kids. He's a tough cookie, that's what he calls himself. It's, it's brought me closer to a lot of other people, um, knowing that you can talk about it with other moms that understand, that get it. And, you know, getting to, to talk and say, what's your child doing? Is this normal or should I ask this? And it, it's, a, it's a great support, you know, to, to have, because even the doctors really don't have the answers for you. So talking with other people who have been through it or being there for someone who is going through it, um, it, it really alleviates some of that stress. I wanted to do a walk. I wanted to do something to raise money for DSF. Then I found something for Gervais syndrome, but it was a half marathon. And I said, you know, I was on this health kick at the time, and I said, I can do this. I've got like four months to train. I can do this. And yeah, I did all right on the elliptical. Once I hit the pavement, I cried. I got to the end of my street, and I said, I'm not gonna be able to do this. <laughs> and I did it. I did it. I trained. I did it in three hours and 10 minutes, but I did it. And I was proud of myself, and Team Delphi raised a lot of money. A lot of money for Dre yeah. Syndrome, and we're doing it again this year. It might we take, are. It might take me. <laughs> it might take me four hours this year because I totally fell off the wagon. But um, Team Delphi is going to be bigger this year, and we're going to mm. hopefully help out even more. Yeah, the momentum we've gained already is incredible. Um, yeah. yeah, we're going to. Everybody's least very excited about yeah. it, and to us, you know, whether we finish the race or not, um, it's bringing awareness to everybody. And, and it's important. And you know, people donate money to whatever their favorite thing is. This is our thing. 